Hello, boys and girls. I'm Roxanne. And I'm Diane. And that's my pal, Diane. We're going to have some fun today. Are you ready to have some fun? I'm ready I to have fun. I am Me totally too. ready. I've Let's been do cooped it. up for a while. Let's do it. Do you want to play a game? Let's play a game. Okay. Let's warm up by All right. playing do a game. you want to play a game? Come on, boys and girls. Get up out of your chair. Get up off the floor and let's play a game. All this right. is a game of charades. Okay. Have you ever played charades before? Oh, a few times. All right. Here's the rules. There are no rules. Yes. All right? There are no rules. So I'm going to think of something in my head that mm. might be outside. Outside? You haven't been outside in a while, have you? We need to get you out more. So here's the thing. We are going to think of something that's outside. Can you think of something that's outside? What are you thinking about? Hmm. Don't tell me, Diane. Don't tell me. Can you act it out and I'll guess? Ready? I can. Before I start, I'm going to give you a hint. Okay. Miss Roxanne, this is a living thing. A living thing? A living thing. Does that mean if it's living? Hmm. What does that mean, boys and girls? If it's living, this living does, is thing, it breathing? This living thing is breathing. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. See if you can guess. Miss Roxanne. I think I know. What Boys am I? Girls, do you know? I think it's a dog. You're right. Good job, Miss Roxanne. That, you're going to have to do better than that. All that right. That was too easy. I already got that one. Here comes something a little bit harder. Miss Roxanne, I'm still a living thing. But this living thing doesn't breathe, at least. Not quite the same way as you or I hmm. or a dog. This one's a little tougher. You're still going to find it outside. Outside. Are you ready? We're ready. Here I go. It doesn't breathe the same way. It's still living. It grew. It sure did. It grew. What could I be? What could she be? I started off small. And then I got taller. And parts of me popped out. What could I be? Huh. I'll give you a hint. OK. Please. I came from the ground. You grew out of the ground as a living thing. You must be some sort of plant. I sure am. Ah, awesome. We're good. High Air five in. <laughs> Miss Roxanne, how come we're talking about inside and outside so much today? Inside and outside. Well, I don't know about you, but I need to be able to get outside. Uh-huh. I feel so much better when I'm outside, when I take a break from, it seems stressful in my house sometimes. It does. And I just need a break. I just need a breather. Whether I'm living or non-living things, sometimes I think. <laughs> so, so I think I need to get outside. And it just makes me feel calmer and better. So I'm thinking that we should look at some things that we might have outside. Hmm. But you know, there's so many things. If we go outside, there's so many things outside. Mm -hmm. There might be rocks and leaves and animals, and there's just so much. I don't know how to keep track of it all. Well, I have an idea for one way that we could do that. What if... We wrote it down, or maybe 
drew a picture? Or could we collect some of the things that we find outside or see outside? What do you think? We could, but my mom would not let me bring a mouse inside. Ho, oh, ho, ho. Mm. <laughs> well, so maybe. where do we put things if we're going to collect them? What do you mean by that? Well, we don't always have to collect the things oh. that we see. Okay. Sometimes we can just collect our memories or our ideas about that thing. Oh, okay. And one way to do that is to put it into a book or on a piece of paper. But I think maybe before we do that, we should go back and talk a little bit about something you mentioned. And that's that we'll find things that are living and things that are non-living. I kind of feel like I need to write that down right now. Should I write that down? I got it. You got it. If you'll just explain to me. OK. Miss Roxanne, what's a living thing? Well, a living thing, boys and girls, what do you think it is? Think real hard. A living thing is something that's growing, like the plant that Miss Diane showed. It grew from out of the ground. It grew, sparked out branches, and had a beautiful flower. So that worked well. Um, mm. So it's something that grows, Miss Diane. It's also something that's made, generally made of cells. Whoa. Okay. Now, cells necessarily, we can't necessarily see them, but under a microscope you could. And so we'd know that something is living because it's made of cells. We also know that, um, that it's, that it's, um... <gasps> I got it, go I got it, I got Thank it! Thank you. Miss Roxanne, do living things get bigger or smaller? Do living things get bigger or smaller? Will living things grow? Huh. So sometimes they can get they bigger. They could get bigger. Or even smaller. Or even smaller. Well, Miss Roxanne, what does it mean if something's non-living? If I'm going to go outside and have an adventure and collect things or look at things and observe them, how do I know if I'm looking at something that's not living? Well, as we do this activity today, we're going to kind of try to categorize those things. So one of the things that I'm thinking about, as you ask, is Maybe a rock would be considered non-living. Wait a minute. A rock's not a living thing? It isn't. It's, okay. it's not growing. Hmm. Is well, it growing? No. I Is guess it's it... not. Hmm. Is it I breathing? A dark marker. It's not breathing. It's not breathing either. OK. Hmm, so a non-living thing has never been alive. Never. Never. Hmm. It does not breathe. Does that mean it doesn't grow? <gasps> Hmm, that's an interesting question when you come across a rock. Do rocks grow? Do rocks breathe? Hmm, rocks are non-living. Boys and girls, I want you to think about that one for a while. Wait, that means this sidewalk in front of my apartment is not living. The sidewalk in front of your apartment or on your, on your steps outside is not living. Huh, what about? It's not breathing. What about my door? It's made of wood. Mm-hmm. But is it breathing? Is mm -hmm. it living now? No. No, it's not. This helps. I Good. think I understand a little bit more about living 
and non-living things that I might see when I'm outside. And I like the way that you recorded all your information. You know, scientists do that. Sometimes we record them in T-charts like you just did, where we have to categorize what we're thinking about just to kind of organize it in our heads. Sometimes I make a list on the back of my hand and I head to the grocery store and that way I know what I need to get. Sometimes I'm smart enough to make it on my smartphone. People make lists in different ways. How would you recommend we, we journal out or keep lists of what we're seeing outside? Well, one way that I like to keep track of things that I see or thoughts that I have is to write them down on paper. And if I want to keep all of those together, I'll put it in a book. And actually, Miss Roxanne, people have been doing this for a really, really long time. In fact, the oldest book ever found on Earth is more than 2,600 years old. Was it on paper? Some of it was. Huh. All right. So people have been putting these books together to record their thoughts and record their ideas for a really long time. And we're going to look at a couple of ways that we can do that this morning. So you can keep all of your thoughts when you're going outside and looking at the world around you in one place. We're going to start with a really simple book that you can do with just Two supplies. And Miss Roxanne, do you want to make this book with me? Yes, but I need, to, I need a minute just to get my supplies. Boys and girls, do you need to go get your supplies too? I think so. Look around your house. There's a lot of things that you could choose from. We're what just we going to need, need. We just need two things. All right. Let's write them down up here so everybody can see. All right. We just need a piece of paper and a pair of scissors. Need paper and scissors or something to cut with. What if I don't have scissors? Oh, then you can tear the paper. All right, I can do that. All right, so I need paper. Miss Roxanne, here's a piece of paper. This paper can be any color. It's whatever you've got sitting around the house. So I will use mm, this pink I piece pink of paper. Too. <laughs> well, you I'll me switch, white. I'll yeah, switch to pink. green. All right. I like green. It reminds right. me of outside. It reminds me of some of the living things okay. that I will see. Okay. So. Miss Roxanne, I'm going to be referring to some of the pictures that I drew to help us make this simple folded book. So, step one to make our simple folded book. We're going to lay this piece of paper flat on a table or on the floor. We want to lay it down wide ways. We call this landscape orientation. Wide ways on the table or on the floor. Ready? Got it. Okay. I'll move my basket so you can see if we can take a closer look at this as we're working. That would be great. So we've completed step one. Step two, we want to fold this piece of paper, oh, hold on, Miss Roxanne. Not tall ways, wide ways. Ah. We're going to fold our piece of paper wide ways and match those edges. We'll try and line up the corners. I like to tap it with my hand. I feel like that helps a lot. I'll hold it down with one hand, and it's okay to ask somebody to help you do this part. I'm gonna take my other free hand, 
and I'm going to gently press down on the side that's sticking up. And I'm going to help it find its way to the floor or the table where I'm working. So I'm going to press that with my hand. I'm also, using my nail to kind of make it smooth to oh, have the edge be like a straight edge. I you know? like that. If you have a ruler handy, you can use that as well. You can lay your ruler flat and gently run it up and down your paper. If you don't have a ruler, that's okay. Your hand works just great. All right, Miss Roxanne, are you ready to make an S? An S, sure. Check out step three on my chart. We are going to take our paper and we are going to bend it to make a curvy S. I'll hold this up so everybody at home can see what we're doing. I'm going to push up with one hand and down with the other. And I'm going to make the letter S. Oh, there. I had to use my thumb to get there. Sometimes it helps to lay this on the table and hold down with one hand. If that works better for you, that's okay too. I got yeah. it, I think. Well, you sure did. When you make that S, we'll line up that top curve. I'll hold that up so everybody can see. We're going to line up the, that curve on the top of your S with the back edge of your letter S, and we'll press down like we're squishing a sandwich. That's the fun part. Press Boys that. and girls, how are you doing? Are we good? Did you get yours? Did you make whew, Did you make three sections? Let me open mine up and take a look. Oh, yeah, that's looking great. Hey, we're already all right. more than halfway done with our book. Awesome job. Our next step, after we press those edges flat, is to open up our S. Now, Miss Roxanne, when we do that, we want to open it like it's a clam. Or Which a little, is a living thing. It is a living <laughs> thing. We're going to open this up just a little bit and find those two folds that are going down the middle of our paper. Do you see your two folds? There's one and two. Oh, I see she's marking them with a marker. I love this idea, Miss Roxanne. It's hard to see otherwise. Mm -hmm. Can I borrow your camera. idea? Yep. Thanks. We'll share. All right. So those two folds that are going down the middle of our paper are going to become the opening for our book. And if you want to see what this looks like before we do any cutting or tearing, by opening up those flaps on our book, we can open and close the cover. And this I like also, this idea for a journal. <laughs> this also lets us fold the entire thing when we're done. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we're finished. So along those two folds on the top of the paper, Miss Roxanne, we are going to cut or tear. If you have scissors, what you'll want to do is gently cut all the way up to that top fold on your paper, like that. And it'll free up the front flap of your book. Notice I did not keep cutting all the way to the back or across the top. Right, and I'm tearing mine because <gasps> nice. although I have a pair of scissors, they're not working real well. Yeah. So I'm tearing mine, so I just had to make sure that the crease was really, really uh, stiff and solid, and that way I can just tear it real easily so that it stays in a straight-ish line. This one's not so straight, but you understand. The concept's still there. And our books don't have to be perfect. It's mine. <laughs> the important thing is that it's okay. ours, and we can take this book outside. The great thing is a single, simple, folded, one-page book fits in your back pocket. So you can take this book outside with you 
and record what you see or what you're thinking about when you're out there. I did this yesterday with my outside book. And I took a minute to give myself some challenges and some things to look for and think about. One thing I decided to look for was three green things. And I found grass, I found a green leaf, and I even found a green bug. That was kind of awesome. I decided I was going to use my book to look at the weather. And yesterday, the weather was sunny. And so I wrote that in my book. This is a great way to capture all of those thoughts and things that you see, and you don't even have to bring them inside. I like that you also wrote words, but you also um, drew some pictures to illustrate I did. what your thinking was. I did. Um, so sometimes when I can't spell something, I draw a picture of it instead, or just when mm -hmm. the mood strikes me instead of writing the words, mm -hmm. I just can't capture quite what I'm feeling or what the mood is or what, what the picture is, and so I draw it instead. And because I'm really not all that great at drawing, sometimes what I'll do is I'll tear a picture out of an old magazine, or out of a newspaper, or out of uh, an ad that comes in the mail, because that helps me to put the idea that I want together. That makes sense. But let's say you have a few more ideas that you want to put together, that you want to collect, or maybe you want your book to be a little bit bigger. I think we can take just a couple of minutes to look at one more way you can make a book. And I'll show you my finished book so that you have an idea of what I'm thinking. I wanted to make a book about the bugs, birds, and the flowers that I see in my neighborhood when we take the dog for a walk. Because it's spring, because a lot of living things are blooming and flowers are coming out because I'm seeing bees and other types of insects or bugs and because I'm seeing lots of birds flying around and they're chirping and talking to each other a lot. I thought, I really want to make a book to capture what's happening in my ecosystem. Oh, that's a good word. Have you heard that word before, Miss Roxanne? Ecosystem? I have, but I want to write it down. I'm going to, I'm going to make another space just for fun. Okay. Because my journal's a little messy, but it's all working out. <laughs> so is mine, and that's okay. I'm going to get my supplies out while Miss Roxanne is writing that down. Ecosystem. Ecosystem. Have you ever heard that term, boys and girls? Ecosystem? It's kind of a fancy one. It's a term scientists use. Mix, Roxanne, can you tell us a little bit more about ecosystems? Boys and girls, what do you think ecosystem is? Hmm. What is a system? Think about that for just a minute. If you have a system to do something, for example, you might have a system in the morning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on brushing your teeth. What does that look like? What do you do first? What do you do second? What do you do third? There's an order in which you do things, right? An order in which things happen. The same thing applies in nature. There's an order in which things are happening. There's a way that things interact with one another. For example, when your dog is outside barking, your dog is interacting with the rest of the system outside. Boy, my dog must be interacting a lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When you take your dog for a walk mm -hmm. and your dog has to use the bathroom, your dog is reacting and interacting with the environment, right? The ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So think about it, ladies and gentlemen. What is it? That makes an ecosystem in your backyard. If it's not your dog, 
And it might not be your cat. Think of some other things. Miss Roxanne, I have one. Can I tell you a quick story? Jump in. This story is about something that we saw in our own backyard. We're very lucky because we have a little pond. We have some water. And next to that little pond, there's a tree. And that tree is blooming with some bright pink flowers. And I have seen bees, and I have seen wasps flying around those flowers and flying around the water. I've seen birds hanging out in that tree and coming to drink some of the water out of the pond. Is that what you mean when you're talking about systems that systems. live together? They live together. Oh. They get along and sometimes they don't get along. I watched yesterday in my backyard a hawk. And you know what the hawk was watching? The hawk was watching a mouse. <gasps> and the mouse was hiding in my garage and afraid to go out. Oh my. Because there was a hawk out there. Uh -huh. And the hawk was going to use his ability or her ability to get the mouse because he was hungry. There's some pretty amazing stories going on out there yeah. in the ecosystem. We need to get out some. Boys and girls, if you haven't had a chance today to get out in the warm sunshine or in the cloudy day, please get out just for a few minutes, even if it's to just open your window and breathe some fresh air. Try to get out. It's important. Miss Roxanne, if you'll do me a favor and hold up my bigger book that I made and maybe even page through it a little bit, I'm going to show boys and girls what they can do if they have just a couple more supplies at home and you want to make a bigger book. We can use some of your three-hole paper if you have extra in your backpack. And if you have any colored paper or magazines or cardboard laying around, you can use that to make a cover for your book. And you can do that just by lining those up and poking a few simple holes. I made some pictures so everybody can see. And we'll go through this kind of quickly, but we also are going to have more resources on the APS site that you can look for to help you learn a little bit about making some more of these books. You can make a bigger book just by poking holes through those three holes that are already there on your paper with a push pin or a small nail or something an adult can help you work with. You can make those holes a little bit bigger by running your pencil through. And then whatever you've got laying around at home, shiny ribbon, I used rubber band for one of my books, or even a piece of string. And you can put those through the holes to hold your book together. But let's talk about what we can find when we're outside and how to look at that ecosystem and find the stories that are there. Miss Roxanne, are you ready to go outside? I'm ready to go outside. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oops. Boys and girls, are you ready to go outside? Have you been cooped up today? Well, get your shoes on and let's go outside for a few minutes. Remember, when you go outside, you want to stay safe. So if outside to you means staying right by your front door to stay safe, stay safe there. If somebody can go with you a little bit further out and it's not in the middle of the road <laughs> and you can stay safe, in or by your yard, by the sidewalk, without getting run over by your neighborhood bicycle. Um, that's what you need to think about. Make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that you let your parents or somebody who's taking care of you, an adult in your house, where, know where you're at so that they can help keep you safe as well. Don't just wander off and not let anybody know. So in my case, I, I like to just go outside for a few minutes and observe. Now you've given us a chance of ways to record our observations and our data. Let's look at what outside looks like. If you, if you take 
when you go outside, if you take and sort of measure about a two by two square. So it's gonna look about this big. How big is the, uh, uh, this big? You know, they say that your, your, from your elbow to about your wrist is about a foot. Oh. And it is, it's about a foot. It's about a foot, so about two of these across. So about that big. So I don't even need a ruler? You don't need a ruler. Awesome. You could even use a piece of paper, right? A piece oh, of paper yeah. is close, about 11 inches or so, so two of these. So about two by two, two by two. So I'm gonna draw that. Thinking about a two by two square, or a two by two square outside, you wanna go outside and find a spot that you wanna be for about 15 minutes. So being outside for 15 minutes might seem like an awful long time, but it's really not when you're observing some really cool things that are happening outside. But you also don't want to be, spend 15 minutes in a place you don't want to be. It's too hot, too cold, those, too wet, those kinds of things. So really think about, look around your environment and think about where you want to be for 15 minutes. Take your journal in your pocket with you and a piece of pen and something to write with. And you end up outside. This is my rendition of outside. Since we couldn't get outside and take the cameras outside today, we brought the outside into you. How's that? It's my artwork, so excuse me, I'm not the best artist, but we got this. So what we've got here is the outside. What do we see? What do we observe? Well, hmm, boys and girls, in your notebook, in your journal, what do you see? Or do you have a scrap piece of paper you can write? Do you see what I see? Do you see grass? <gasps> pretend now that you're outside. I know I'm not a great artist, but pretend. Do you see grass? Yes. What else do you see? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I see a non-living thing. You do? I do. I see some rocks. A non-living thing. Actually, you see a lot of rocks, right? What about the dirt over here? Oh. It's pretend dirt, but it's still dirt. <laughs> Is it living, boys and girls, or non-living? Hmm. Mm, it's not breathing. No. And it's not really getting bigger and making new parts. So no. I'm going to say that's a, that's a non-living thing. You got it. Did you get that? I hope you got that. Are you having fun? We're having a blast. Okay, so we have some grass. So I picked a two by two area where there's a little bit of grass, a little bit of gravel, and some suggery things laying around, some dirt and whatnot. Think about what your area is gonna look like. Hmm. Maybe I could look at all of the different colors that I see outside. What if there's no grass? Miss Roxanne, could I look up? You could. You know, the fun part about this activity is a two by two when you look up and you have a view or a lens, if you will, mm -hmm. with your hands, you can actually look up and create yourself a window into the world. Ooh. You could see the sky, the sun, and the mountains, the tree, the bird's nest. So you don't really have to go very far. But in this case, we've got a lot of things in the, in the environment. We've got a lot of things in the ecosystem. Where do you record that? Well, you can record it back in your journal. Now, you had a journal we were showing earlier. I bet, I wonder if your journal records some of the things that I have here. Boys and girls, what do you see? Can you add things to your list? What do you see in my ecosystem that you can write down on your piece of paper? What are some things? We listed grass and rocks and dirt and sun. What about, what about the bunny rabbit? Oh, I saw a bunny rabbit in our neighborhood the other you day. You did? Yes, it was small and it was furry and it hopped really, really fast, especially after my dog tried to chase it. <laughs> Back to
to that ecosystem thing where you have a dog, right? You have the environment where your rabbit is and your dog share. And in this case, they might not have wanted to share very well, right? Miss Roxanne, I noticed you have some finger puppets. I do. And I brought out one that I have seen in our neighborhood a lot lately, especially because it's spring and a lot of animals are coming out of hibernation. They're coming out of their nest and babies are being born. And I've seen a lot of squirrels running in the yard behind our house. And I saw one running up the tree the other day behind our house. And it's interesting because I was also listening. It's not just about observing with your eyes. You can also observe with your ears. I want to borrow a little bit from a book about some of the things that we might hear. Even if we can't go outside, we can still open the window and observe with our ears. This book called A Nest is Noisy really helps get me thinking about how I can observe with my ears and I can observe by listening. And this gives me maybe something else I can record in my book and I can set aside a page for I hear. Let's read just a little bit from A Nest is Noisy. I like this book because it shows me lots of different kinds of birds and the nests that they live in. A nest is noisy. It is a nursery of chirp, 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 chirping, buzzing, squeaking, beep, beep, beeping, bubble, 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 bubbling, babies. I'm seeing a lot of these nests right now because it's spring. And even when I don't go outside and my windows are open, I am hearing so many of these noises. A nest is welcoming. Many birds assemble a cradle for their eggs, knitting together leaves and twigs and softening it with grass and hair and moss and fluffy seeds, leaf skeletons, even old snake skin. They might also add a candy wrapper, plastic bags, and bits of cloth or paper. Birds sure are creative, Miss Roxanne. And I was thinking about that the other day when I couldn't go outside. And I thought, if I were a bird, what kind of nest would I make? And I even put that in my big green book. I tore out a page. Let me see if I can get that to stand up. I tore out a page from a magazine. And I kept it so that the next day, when I could go outside, I could collect leaves and twigs and make a nest of my own. That's the great thing about collecting all of these ideas and the sounds that we hear, because we can build stories around them. So if you can't go outside, Remember, you can still observe by listening for some of those noises. And maybe later, when you do have the chance, you can keep building on that story that started with chirp, chirping, and beep, beeping, and buzz, buzzing. There's a lot to observe and collect outside. While you are talking, and reading parts of that story, I thought of some words.
that were really critical for me to write down to try to remember. So I used my journal. Hmm. I made up topics here at the top. I hear, I feel, and I wonder are my hmm. topics. So in my, in my journal, while you were reading and while we were observing things out in our ecosystem, our pretend ecosystem, I noted, ah, under the I hear, I noted these words. I hear, and I heard you say things like, I hear buzz, buzz. And to me, a buzz is a bee, but to other people, it might be a wasp. What's a buzz to you? What makes a buzzing noise to you? Could it be a truck going by? It could be. I also feel the rumble of a truck going by near my house. I feel sometimes the buzzing of the wires around me in my, near my house. There's a lot of things that buzz. Hmm. It doesn't have to be a living thing. Huh. It could be a non-living thing that also buzzes. I also thought about words like bubble and that there were things that were bubbling. And what comes to mind, boys and girls, when you think of the word bubble, what bubbles up? Do you think of just water? What else bubbles? You've seen yourself blow a bubble. Have you seen dogs making bubbles? Sometimes they get hungry and bubbles come out of their mouth when they're salivating and want to be fed. What else makes bubbles? Hmm. I've seen bubbles on a tree of sap. Right? Then another, another thing that came to mind in my journal is the feeling words that you shared and mm. the feelings that come from being outside. Outside gives me such calm and peace and pleasure to spend. I want you to spend, boys and girls, 15 minutes outside every day looking at your plotted out ecosystem and noticing what you see and what you feel. Now is a perfect time to really, really think about what those feelings are deep inside. When you read, I felt things like you use the word welcome. Mm. And the earth welcomes me when I spend time outside observing what's going on. When my ecosystem has a cloud that goes by, and all of a sudden, what happens, boys and girls, when a cloud goes by on your concrete outside or near your tree outside? I see a shadow. How do the, shadow, do the shadows move? They do. If I went out at 8 o'clock in the morning and again at 5 o'clock at night, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. What do you feel when you go outside? Are you feeling welcome? You use the word loved. Hmm. I feel loved by the creatures outside, and I feel like I'm loving them by taking care of the ecosystem, by not leaving trash outside and destroying the world of the animals and plants that live there. You know, Miss Roxanne, when I take a few minutes to go and sit outside, and I'm writing down what I see, and I'm writing down what I hear, a lot of times that helps me to feel calm. Calm. Hmm. You know, I have to tell you, I had a hard time sleeping last night. I was a little anxious about things. Coming to spend some time with you made me feel better, but you know what makes me feel best of all? is getting outside for a few minutes, even if it's just sitting by the window, looking outside. Try it, boys and girls. Try this activity at home where you're recording your feelings on a journal, inside of a journal, whatever your journal looks like, and that you're recording what you're thinking. You know, artists do that. 
I was thinking about the different people that use journals for mm -hmm. their work. I know scientists use journals to record their data. You know what data is? It's all of the measurements and all of the facts and all of the figures that might want to go along with what we're seeing. For example, I could count the number of rocks here. I could count what I, how many living things I see and record that. I could count and record the measurements of those things, how long something is, how wide something is, how many steps an ant who came across my path, or a spider, we've got a little puppet spider here, Mr. Spider comes across, and he runs across our ecosystem. How many steps did he take across? Did he get all the way? Now I've got some geometry coming in there. Did he run straight across horizontally or vertically? Did he go in a circle and what does that look like? So there's lots of ways that scientists can record this data. I also think about my artist friends who really think about things from more of a feeling side of things. They really think about how the animals feel. When the dog is barking, how did the rabbit feel? When the hawk is chasing the mouse, how did the mouse feel? When I see a spider come across my ecosystem, how do I feel? I don't like spiders, so it frightens me. So who are some other people or what other careers can you think about that record their thoughts on paper so that they later can write a book or illustrate a book? What are some other careers that you can think of? Tell somebody in your house. Who else writes their thoughts down? Artists, scientists, storytellers. Storytellers. So the author of this book and the author of this book probably started their thought processes by using a piece of paper to write their thoughts down or to draw their thoughts down. Do you remember what we call the, the career or the the title of the person who drew the pictures in a book? Oh, oh, I know this one. It's called an illustrator. Illustrator. So, Miss Diane, when you were illustrating in your book earlier, or you were collecting pieces and parts of the, the ecosystem in here, you wanted to remember what it looked like. You wanted to remember what it felt like. You wanted to remember what it smelled like outside. So that you can go back and share it, either in a book form. Boys and girls, we'd love it if you published a book or a story and sent it to us. We'd share it with people. So you could share your thoughts and your feelings about your 15 minutes outside in your ecosystem and what that looked like. Those are so important to record right now. We're making history. Today is a historical moment. You're not going to have this day again. You'll have tomorrow and the next day and the next day. How are you going to remember what happened today? It's with a journal. So write things down that you remember about your ecosystem. These books are a great way to record your story and you can share that story with your family and later on with your friends when we can all see each other again. Miss Roxanne, do we have time for another story from one of our authors? Sure, why not? Let's think about let's think about our story. This particular book is called Who's Hiding There? Does who's that mean they're there? looking for who's hiding? Well, I don't know. That's maybe, a good question. Maybe they're doing some observation. Maybe they're doing some observation. Can I set it up here and you still see it? Yes. Okay. I'll move my pine cone. Who's hiding there? Who is this book by? Let's, let's talk about that first off. 
This book is written by Melissa Blackwell Burke. So she's the one that went out and actually had the book, had the words for this book. You mean she's the author? She's the author, written by. And then the illustrator is John Kanzler. John Kanzler. And what did you say an illustrator did? Well, they provide all of the pictures that go in your story. So for your book, guess what? You get to be the author and the illustrator. That'd be fun. But I have somebody in my house that might be a better illustrator. I like words, and I'm real picky about words. So I would probably huh. write the words and then give it to somebody in my household to let them do the illustrating. And I wonder if they illustrated something and then I got to write the words. I wonder if I could figure out how to do that. Probably. That's a great collaboration. Probably. I think we have just enough time okay. to find out who's, who's hiding, hiding there. there. Who's hiding there? See if I can do that. I wish my friends were here said Heidi Hare. I wish my friends were here. Do you wish your friends are here? Where can all the animals be? I'm here, Heidi Hare, an animal answered. Look in the leaves. Look in the leaves. Do you see anybody hiding? I see you now. Heidi Hare, Will Wood, Wood, Woodchuck, you were hiding from me. I'm here too, another animal said. Do you see me in the tree? Boys and girls, when you go out, make sure and look in the trees and see what you can see. What do you see in the tree? What's in that tree? Do you see the moth in the tree? My fingers aren't working. Now I see you, said Heidi Hare. Meg Moth, you look just like the tree bark. Do you know what the word is for somebody that looks like and blends into their environment? What is that word? Hmm. Starts with a C. Camouflage. Camouflage. This little creature here blended in with the, with the bark. Slide out to the grass to see me, another animal said. Don't get me mixed up with a stick. What? Who's going to be like mixed stick? up with a stick? Oh, do you see what might be a stick except it's all curled up? All curled up. That's a snake. Silly snake, said the snake, you were hiding in the grass and you scared me. Rabbit's running. I see you, Fay Fawn, said Heidi Hare. Your spotted coat makes you very hard to see. We have to notice the characteristics of the animals and the things in our environment. You notice that the moth blended in. You notice that the fawn blended in as well, but in a different way with spots. At first, I looked around and thought that no one was there, said Heidi Hare, but look at all my friends. Boys and girls, I hope you have an opportunity to look outside in your environment to record what you know and what you see about what's going on around you for historical reasons, for memory purposes, to record your feelings about today, go out at different times during the day, go out when it's raining just for a little while, and record what you know about what's going on in your world and the ecosystem. Record living and non-living things. Think about what you're smelling and tasting and hearing and all of the measurements that go along with how big is that animal? Bigger than your hand? Smaller than your hand? And remember, 
the more you look, the more you're going to see and the more you can add to your story. We hope you've had a really good time this morning learning a little bit about ecosystems, about science, maybe picking up a few new art skills, a few new words, and another way to think about the world around you. Thank you for joining us today for At Home with APS. Have a great day till we're together again.